me, how's it hanging? How's it happening? You guys know this is Kevin from the Chord Progression Podcast, sponsored by Dark Fusion Systems, the best for your custom computing needs, whether you're making a gaming PC, you need it for streaming, your music, creative, business, or if you need Dark Fusion Systems, will build the proper PC for you. You get $100 off your entire building code CPPOD at check out darkvisions.com link description of the podcast below so go check it out they also have a brand new keyboard that's out that you should probably go check out too if you are looking for one hell of a keyboard but now let's get to our feature presentation we have david dustin from the hip-hop influenced deathcore band filth on the podcast the brand new album southern hostility comes out on april 5th we talk about the album how the band is expanding their sound on it what to expect them in a live setting and then the mass hysteria ensues when we try and convince them to do a limp biscuit deathcore cover yeah, get ready for a great time. You guys ready? Let's go! Yeah. Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, listeners of the Core Progression Podcast. You know what? Instead of just going saying we're going to go heavy, let's just go really fucking heavy and have an absolute blast with it. And this band, I mean, they absolutely fit that bill. Heavy, have a blast with it, have fun with it, and you're just going to have a good time listening to them. So they've got a brand new record called Southern Hostility coming out on April 5th. So you're going to want to go yeah. check it out because it's got a hip-hop influenced deathcore sound. And if you like deathcore, if you like stuff that's going to make you want to slam through a wall and potentially take <laughs> someone out and fun punch them in the face, this is what you're going to get and this is what you got from this band. So please welcome David and Dustin from the band Filth to the podcast. So gentlemen, welcome to the Core Progression Podcast. What up? So Thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, pumped th- to be here. I am absolutely happy to have you here, guys. How has everything been going with you guys as we are so damn close to the release of Southern Hostility? I mean, you guys have had to be seeing a good amount of positivity coming off of it from the singles that have been released. On top of that, with a brand new tour coming up to really support this, just how has life been going up to the release of the album? It's been busy, I'd say. It's been very busy. It's been good. It's been exciting. You know, a little, little nervous, but ready to get this out, ready for everybody to hear it. You know, singles have been pumping. You know, we couldn't we couldn't ask for a better response. Just super stoked and appreciative. So I gotta ask this, what's what's the nerves coming from, man? I mean, again, I know it's your like being it's your third album at this point. So of course this isn't something that is brand new to you guys, but it seems like this might be one of your potential bigger releases ever. So is that where some of the nerves are coming in? Yeah. It's de- <laughs> yeah, it's definitely definitely the response has been, you know, insane compared to the other releases. So you know, just one of those things where hoping it'll be our biggest and best release and, you know, just a little nervous waiting to see what's going to happen when it drops. Well, I've been taking a look at some of the things too and just trying to see what people have been going off on, what people have been saying about some of the singles and seeing how the response has been. And again, it seems like you guys have been getting a pretty good response on it, especially seeing like some of the differences in the songs with, because I believe it was Stay Gutter, Chin Check, kind of have a little bit of a similar feel to them, but then you get Southern Hostility and Martyr, and they have a little bit of a different feel to them as well. So you're showing a lot of us as sing- from the singles a little bit of a more expansive, different side that it's not going to be just the same thing over and over again like we've seen a bunch of other albums be in the past. This is going to be a lot more of an expansive thought compared to just, all right, this is exactly what you're going to expect and go forward with that. No, of course you're going to get exactly what you want, but you're also going to get a much more evolved sound where you're going to see a different pieces come in and a much grander scheme of what Filth is showing on this album. Oh yeah, absolutely. This is the definitely the biggest uh, variety of styles of music that we've ever done. I mean, it's you know all over the place. Very experimental. It's a blast though. All right, well, how about we just dive right into that? Because especially, I could see, especially as the as the songs went on, it's like, I went through the whole entire album. I got through, I'm like, okay, I see where some of the similarities come here. And I see where some of the more experimental pieces come in. Just why did you guys potentially step out of that comfort zone to try some of this stuff? On top of that, where were some of those inspirations coming from? Because there are a couple of things I picked up on and I even went, ooh, because it was that good. <laughs> uh, the biggest inspiration is from the music that we grew up listening to. I mean, it was me personally. I was tired of writing heavy albums just to be heavy. And me and Dustin both agree. We were like, let's just go into this one with a much more open mindset. Let's try new things. Have and, fun with it. Yeah. Just have fun. With it. That was a big thing, just to have fun. It wasn't, it wasn't that grueling process of how can I write 10 different songs with 13 different breakdowns in them and it make it sound cool. We didn't, I didn't even worry about that at all. It was just let's, let's write heavy stuff and have a good time. See, that makes a lot of sense because, I mean, take a look at what's going on around, especially with heavier music, stuff that's really heavy, that's really raw, visceral, and in your face. 
it's of course we get bands that are writing the heavy stuff that we all absolutely love that we love going to see at shows we love that just insane energetic feeling of the pit opening up and just pure carnage happening but also you see a lot of heavier bands as well starting to experiment with more ideas different things and they're really starting to take off not only in the hard rock and metal scene but also in pop culture as well i mean take a look at bands like uh Lorna Shore. I mean, they're just how big they got, especially with having more of this cinematic and theatrical sound behind oh, yeah. what they're doing. Slar to prevail, having that just with Alex Terrible's vocal set with the range that you're able to go off of with that adds so much more prem- like promise to it. What, what Knocked Loose is doing, just having a blast, just doing everything crazy that they're doing. And recently got to interview uh, Lochi from Alpha Wolf, and they're doing something similar as well where, yeah, they still want to be heavy because that's what they love. That's what they like to do. But if you just stay in that box the entire time as an artist, you're just not going to feel satisfied. You're not going to grow. And it's your art on top of it as well. So the most important thing is going to be to make the music you want, but also have fun with it. It's oh, your yeah. creation. If you're not having fun with your creation, then what's the point? Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, and you have to play these songs over and over and over, you know, especially when you're on tour. And, you know, if you're not enjoying it, it, it gets boring as hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You hate playing it every night. It gets to that one song where you just don't want to anymore. Yeah, you don't want to get to that point where it's like, I got to play this again and again and again. And and then it just takes a lot more of the fun out of it. It just takes more of that enjoyment out of it. And then especially with something that is as creative as this in terms of, you know, making music and in terms of the enjoyment that we get from it, the last thing we want to do is make it feel like it's just that day in, day out, like daytime job. And have to play do the same shit over and over again because that mundane is especially from the creative standpoint will absolutely destroy you yeah it, yeah 100 percent. so then a good thing you guys wrote southern hostility because i don't think that's going to happen on this one <laughs> no I, I agree we've been uh, even at practice man the songs have been just so fun to rip through every night i mean that there isn't a, there isn't one on there that we don't enjoy playing i mean normally by this point you know, you've had the album for so long, you've been jamming the songs, you've already found a song or two, that you're just like, all right, this is not fun. <laughs> <laughs> but we haven't reached that point, so. I would hope you guys haven't reached that point. Again, just the way the the way the track list works, of course, I, I did see some more stuff that has more of that, you know, like that melodic death chord kind of drive to it. I'm a little bit more of like the fan of like the faster pace, more upbeat, just, you know, really get that energy going. So again, singles like Southern Hostility really, you know, connect with me. Or other songs like Op Stoppers just really get me in the mood, just really get me flowing with it. So you're going to get a lot of differentiation here. And I can see where, especially with this album, with the previous songs you have, you're going to be able to build out a whole entire live set around this that's going to be energetic. It's going to have a fun flow to it, but also is going to feel different to the point where you're not playing the same stuff consistently. And the fans are always going to be on their toes expecting, you know, not expecting what's going to come next. Right, right, yeah. No, one hundred percent. I mean, it's it, it's going to make the live set so much more fun, a lot more energy, you know, much bigger sound. Well, before we jump into the whole live set, I do want to ask a little bit, a couple of things about the tracks as well. So, throughout all thirteen tracks that you have on this album, of course, this question is probably going to be one of those like, ah, oh, I got to answer this because it's like picking one of my favorite kids. Because of course, you guys love these songs, you guys create these songs, and you're having so much fun with them. But outside of the singles, so we'll take those out of there because everyone's, you know, people that had a chance to hear those already. So yes. outside of the singles, the songs that people have not heard yet, which is the song for each of you that you think people should definitely go and check out? And of course, why? I'll let you go first. Uh, for me, it's Op Stoppers. That's <laughs> the riffs in it are, they're fun. Uh, the one liner in it is big. I mean, it's just, uh, it, it, it feels it feels like filth. It feels like West Borland from Limp Biscuit. It feel, I mean, it's got just such a mesh in it, man. I mean, I, I just, the, the entire time I was writing that song, I was having fun. And that's, that's the lyrics, everything. That's just that's probably my favorite song on the album. Yeah, that's one of my favorites too. <laughs> but my favorite one's probably Play Dead, though. Yeah, that's a, because because of the because of the person that, that's on it. And I get to do cleans in it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, those are two really good picks, especially I'll go into Op Stoppers first, specifically because it's like I was listening through it and it just, it does have a little bit more of that rougher guitar tone to it. It is a little bit sludgy at that same point in time as well. So it does have all that rougher feel to it. And it just overall, in my opinion, it just flowed through the overall sound just really well. 
But what really happened for me was, is especially as you got into the vocals, it had that more like aggressive rapping, unclean style to it. And in my opinion, it really let that instrumental side really get drawn out even more in terms of a contrast, because you're not expecting that kind of vocal over that kind of a riff, but it just brought out so much more. And I thought this is where you guys really shined on the record because we're seeing that deathcore influence really hitting the instrumental tone, the build, and some more of those hip hop influences really styling in the vocals and how this major contrast happening between the two pieces is not only showing you the difference between the two, but effectively amplifying both for the positive. Right, yeah. Yeah, that that's a fun, energetic song, just front to back. That's why I'm like, you guys got to be playing this one live. I hope to God you are, because if you're not, then that might be a problem. The, the, uh, this, the, the first tour, uh, we're not planning on the first tour, but it will be on the next one to follow after that. We uh, we had so much we had to bring out and siphon through. We've got a lot of songs, so it was kind of tough to <laughs> pick, you know, <laughs> a set list to play. <laughs> well, I say, how could you not play this on the first one? Like, I'm glad you're playing it on the second one, but the first one, I'm just like, oh. <laughs> what the hell? However, I think I ran through all the like the dates for the tour. And I'm like, huh, it doesn't look like any of the first dates are coming near me. So the second dates, I'm like, well, this yeah. is going to be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. The first tour is all southeast. The second one's Midwest, and the third one's northeast. So we're trying to cover, you know, as much ground as we can, you know, and 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 before we venture out west. Sam, like I'm, I'm that's what I'm looking for the second one because you said Midwest and that's exactly where I'm saying. I mean, I'm wearing a freaking Milwaukee Brewer shirt, so it kind of <laughs> gives noticed, away yeah. that it's more of a Midwest thing up here. <laughs> yeah, so I'm an Atlanta Braves fan myself, so I respect the Brewers. It's it's just it's just respect there as long as you know you're not spending a crap ton of money and then just trying to buy every single player that's out there and then ruin it for the rest <laughs> of us. As well, long I'll as say- it- yeah, but then, but, but then that's always funny when they get knocked out in the first round of the playoffs and everyone's just like, oh, yeah. ha, 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 you spent like three times or four times as much as our payroll and you got to the exact same spot we did. How does yep. that make you feel? Yeah. <laughs> I, I just find that hysterical. But when it comes to play dead, now I got to jump into that one because, well, that's going to be an interesting piece. So. Overall, what was the overall feeling around Play Dead and getting that feature in there too? Because that's something that, you know, I got to wonder about, especially if you're doing clean vocals on it. Well, the we were on we were on tour with 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 Chelsea Grin and I did a feature for them on Suffer in Heaven. And then we're just I was just like, "Hey man, you want to do, you want to do a feature on our album?" And uh just did it right there on the tour bus. And uh that song is it's a person I guess it's a little bit of a personal one because it it sounds it sounds outwardly aggressive, but it's more inwardly aggressive. And it's just fun and I get to do like, you know, creepy cleans on it. So <laughs> That was something I was really happy because, you know, especially about halfway through the song, it's like the vocals get a little bit more snarly and nasty at the same point in time, too. And you're just like, what the hell is really going on here? And the tempo (laughs) increase that goes along with it. Now you're starting to feel a little bit more of that energy drive really happening in it. And it does make sense where, you know, you're kind of writing it from a place where you're really looking internally and not like screaming at someone externally, like, you know, play the fuck dead or something like that. <laughs> it's just really getting deep into it. But the fact that you had the feature literally recorded on a tour bus while you were, while you were, you know, on tour with Chelsea Grant, it's just, God damn. What was that like? Just being able to just have that feature literally happen while on tour on a bus because, I, of course, you know, I'm always thinking, you know, these are going to be done, you know, professional studios and whatnot. But, no, you're literally doing it in the middle of a freaking bus. Maybe in the middle, maybe on the road. I don't know. So, what was yeah. that like just actually seeing a feature done in the middle of a tour bus? Dude, it was it was insane. That was the first deathcore band I had ever heard, period. And uh, just getting to, getting to, getting to see him, like, I don't know. I don't even know how to explain it. It was getting to see, getting to see getting to see him work and lay his vocals down and everything. It was cool just to be in the same area. It was in Salt Lake City. It was the last day of tour. There was three foot of snow outside, and we were just chilling on his bus. And he was just—I mean—knocked it out like that. It was cool. 
maybe some of that internal anger energy came from literally being around three feet of snow. And you're like, I mean, we're in a tour bus. It might be cold here. I don't want to go outside. I just want to be warm somewhere. Maybe enjoying a yeah. very, very, very nice tropical drink on a beach. But yeah. <laughs> let's just let this rip right now. Ah! Yeah, man, it was awesome, though. There is one song that I do specifically want to ask about because it was the one that probably took me by surprise the most. And it was Glass House, specifically because I was looking through your track list. It's like every song's, you know, around like that two and a half to three minute mark. We get to Glass House and it's like almost five minutes. And I was sitting there thinking, wait, 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 wait. What's going to happen in these five minutes, especially after seeing what you guys have done previously? So how did you guys write Glass House, especially when it came to a much longer song? Um, It was more so Glass House. uh was more of a traditionally style wrote feel song. You know, a lot of the stuff on the on the the first couple of EPs, the first album, you know, they're four or five minute tracks and stuff. So it was we still wanted to try to keep some of the core sound that is filth, you know. And that 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 song kind of blossomed from that idea. There's a lot in that song. I mean there's a you know a blast beat part. There's a metal core style breakdown in the middle of it. There's some singing in it. I mean, it's definitely got a massive variety through it. But it definitely was built off the foundation of feeling like an older Phil song. Okay, I can see where that makes sense because there definitely is a lot more that's in there. And from my perspective, the reason why it stood out to me as one of the better songs in the record was because with more of that time that you guys had in there, you're able to try some of those things out and let some of those other sonic ideas really like come together and really have the time to mold flesh out with each other. And the amount that's in there really for me stood out i mean from the vocal side of it there were had some more of those aggressive like faster rapping styles right when the song gets going and i really did enjoy that especially over the more melodic flow that's in that point in time but then we also get like fried gutturals like will ramos style at points and (laughs) i'm just like this is this is random but okay let's just (laughs) see where this is gonna go but then as it works, going out back into the bridge and where the breakdown is going to come in later in the song, that's where all these different pieces, it's like, how is this all going to come together? And you have the time to let this all really marinate. So when that happens, everything works out because you see the evolution of the song and the band sound overall. And you see that happen with much more time left on here. So you guys took that time frame and really made the most of it throughout the whole entire like four and a half minute runtime that is this song. So Glass yeah. House... That was when I'm like, I'm absolutely floored that you put that at the back end of the album and the track list because it's that moment in time where you want to get to it. You're kind of waiting to see what's going to happen here. And when you get to that moment, it's that moment that people are going to be like, this was a fantastic way to close out that album because now you feel like, you know, even going forward into the next filth record, whatever you guys do next, there is so much more that could easily be done. That it's just like the continued evolution of filth is open to whatever you guys want it to be. Oh yeah, we we straight open the door with this one. I mean, this <laughs> yeah, we have we can go any direction we want and do anything we want. That was that was kind of the, that was another kind of goal behind the album. It was like we really want to step into this and be able to just experiment. I mean, we're gonna keep the same heavy core sound, the aggressiveness, the anger, and everything that won't go away. But we can definitely dabble in a lot of other things. Yeah, not just be nailed down for one. Yeah, specific thing. Yeah, we were we were we did that for so long that it was just like, you know, it just got you know it got boring. Just be a heavy band. Yeah, we we were just a heavy band to be a heavy band. So this album definitely allowed us to you know open plenty of more doors. I don't think you just open the doors. I think you like attach the thing to C four the doors and then dented and blow <laughs> yeah, wide open. Just blew them right off. <laughs> Completely out of nowhere. Now the door is just, it's not even the door is open. The door is open, but there's a giant gaping hole where the wall surrounding the door used to be that you guys are able to go through. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah we're, we've already sat down and started working on some new stuff. And it's very, uh, well, I'm not going to go into it, but it's, there's a lot to it. It's fun. But that's one thing I'm enjoying about seeing about a lot more bands, especially because like when it comes to the podcast, I've been doing this for five years now. So I've been able to look at a lot of bands, see a lot of bands and watch a lot of bands grow throughout their the last couple, like through the pandemic and everything. And it's bands that are end up taking chances with those sounds that end up trying something different on top of that are doing it because that's what they want to do. And they're going to continue to have fun with it and not try and put themselves in a box. 
those are the bands that it's at first, you know, you might see some people, you know, oh God, this isn't good. This isn't what it used to be. You're going to get the people on like metalcore and deathcore Reddit to just hate you guys because, oh, you guys change up one small piece that I don't like. But then you take a look at, you know, bands that have been doing that since the pandemic ended. Holy shit. Those are the bands that are making sure that anything with heavy music in it is becoming popular uh, to some extent again. I oh, yeah. continue to grow and you're starting to, you're seeing bands that are, have these heavier sounds, you know, packing out rooms that have like three, four, 5,000 people in them and selling them out. I mean, sometimes yeah. you're getting them even going to arena, <laughs> arena settings. It's based on the fact that when I see it as heavier bands continue to still, you know, have that heavy core within them, but they're able to try all these different things, experiment with different ideas and really let their, like their inspiration and the fun behind it filter in that's when you start to see a lot more of that substance come through. And that's really what people gravitate towards is substance because we all love the heavy stuff, but if you get that heavy stuff and you have some more substance in there, ooh, is that good? Yeah. It isn't the same, you know, heavy riff over and over and over and over again. Don't get me wrong. I love that stuff. I love, but, same thing. I love, know, same I love that stuff, but you know, it's just like, this there's a I don't know this album's fun, and I enjoy a good album that has a nice variety of stuff that I can, you know, delve into. Because we always do like you want to do the thing. Man, yeah, experimenting with their sound and just enhance it over time. Yeah, yeah. Because if you're not trying to like, if if you're of course as time goes on too, think about this with sound. Time goes on and uh, we go through different things in life throughout that time. We get older, different perspectives come in, different influences come in, change comes in and how we see and connect with music and connect with these different sounds is going to change over time. So like even probably the stuff that we all listened to 10 years ago, we don't see that stuff the same way we do now. I think about my favorite bands when I was 10 years ago, when I was 19. And if I listed my top 10, only one band is still in my top 10. Like that's it. And it's just based on how things change. So of course, when we have those changes happen, those influences are going to come through in our creative process and the music, especially you guys are making is going to have those pieces in there. So we're starting to see some more of those expanded ideas come in and that's where the evolution of sound really happens. That's where bands really start to get their own hold of. This is where we are and this is where we can go and let's see where the journey takes us. But at the same time, it allows fans to continue to go on that journey with you and they still know it's you at the core. So if I want something that's super duper heavy from Filth, I know you guys are going to deliver. If I want oh, yeah. something that has more substance in it, but still is heavy, again, I know you guys are going to deliver. Yep, uh, that's the goal. We want to we want to give something for everybody. You guys are going to be better deliverers than you know the U.S. Postal Service. Filth <laughs> always on time, always delivers. USPS, yeah, about yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you guys suck. <laughs> we got our own we got our own like gripes and quips with them so uh we'll, we'll just leave them to be their own thing but as you guys said you guys had you know a, a tour coming up with support like supporting this album of course southeast then midwest then northeast so let's get the lowdown on this bad boy because i feel like there should be everybody going out to see this because it's going to be one hell of a time so if people are going to go out and say i gotta go see filth what can we expect from you guys live now I don't want to get specifics. I just want to get people like jazz up be like, if I don't have a ticket yet, I'm going to be doing myself a massive disservice if I continue to sit here and don't buy a ticket right this moment. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's you're going to have a lot of fun at, at a filth show, that's for sure. The lineups, I mean, the first tour, heavy hitter, coma waves, great bands. The, I mean, every show stacked. You're, there, there's going to be a lot of energy, a lot of aggression. You're going to hear a lot of new music from us. You're going to hear some of the older classics. We have this. We have this. Is the longest set we've ever played. So I mean, it's going to. There's going to be a lot packed in there. It's going to be a good time. It's going to be a good time. So, do you want energy? Do you want aggressive music? Do you want new stuff? Do you want a stacked lineup? If you said yes to any of those questions, because you probably said yes to one of them, go get your ticket to see Filth live. Because. <laughs> As, as the Nike symbol, you know, quote says, just do it. As Shia LaBeouf said in his green screen video, just do it. Make <laughs> your dreams to go see filth come true. 
Don't let yeah, your dreams please. of seeing filth be dreams. Make them realities. <laughs> just, do it! Just do it. Just come to one show. We promise to be coming back to more. <laughs> see, that that's the only thing I'm nervous about is I'm going to go see you guys play a show and then the next time I'm going to be like, fuck, I got to go see this again. Is my <laughs> wallet going to be able to handle this? Or is my you know internal mind going to be able to fathom the fact that I might only be able to go see one? Can I handle that myself? I mean, I'd rather go see one than none. But I want to go see like two or three and go have a smashy, smashy fun time in the pit. <laughs> yes. No, there's going to be lots of smashy, smashy fun. <laughs> now I feel like I got to come when I see you guys come play live. Like I got to get a T-shirt that just says smashy, smashy fun time. And it'll be like, who the fuck is want smashy, smashy fun time? That dude does. Uh, yeah, you should. You, like should uh, you should make some shirts like that. <laughs> That'd be a hot seller for you. I've been I've been trying to toy around with some of that. I did try and make one shirt that Lily just said mosh pit fit. So it's like, oh, you like going to mosh pits? Are you fit to go into a mosh pit? You like going in there? Get this shirt because it looks good. But now I also want to add smashy, smashy fun time in there. But it's got to be like the, the smashy, smashy has to be very aggressive font. And then fun time has to be like a bubble style Hello Kitty font. Oh yeah, I'd wear it. Yeah, you should definitely do that. <laughs> All right, now that's two shirt ideas. I actually really like that one, but I've got another feeling too. I'm gonna end up going to see you guys play live, and I'm gonna see a big giant shirt that has the filth logo on it. It's gonna turn around. It's gonna have the smashy, smashy fun time logo. On it. I'm just gonna look and go, huh, neat. <laughs> and then I'm gonna end up coming to you guys after the show and be like, I know exactly where you got that. It was yeah. for me. Can I just get one of those, please? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's <laughs> a good idea. <laughs> um, I, I, it might, it might work. Honestly, I don't know. If you guys take the idea, just, um, just enjoy it. That'll be the best way to describe it. Just enjoy it. <laughs> well, I promise. If we ever did use it, we'll make sure to give you a couple of them. <laughs> oh, perfect. I'm like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna be giving on this one at this point in time. Let's just, let, let's just make, let's just make great things happen. So, smashy, smashy, <laughs> fun time shirt. Is yours. <laughs> <laughs> but that's going to be just absolutely crazy. So it's what other things you guys have planned coming up for 2024 outside of these tours? Like, are you going to be doing any potential support tours for some any of these bigger bands that are coming out? Or are you guys just going to be doing your own thing, headlining? What's the overall plan for throughout 2024? Uh, yeah, there's, we definitely are working on a couple support tours. Um, nothing that we can give away at the moment, but details will be coming pretty soon. Uh, we're playing Michigan Metal Fest in August. Uh, Mushroom Head, Gideon, you know, Shades. Traders, Head PE, you know, stack lineup. Um, and we plan to try to write some more, you know, get the album out, pump it, push it as much as we can, play some shows, you know, and mm. hopefully get it in front of as many faces as possible. See, I mean, again, that makes a lot of sense. It's You guys have the time right now, especially with a brand new album coming out, and everyone's going out on tour, too, so why not just keep going going at it? Keep pushing as much as possible to the point where, again, you guys got a Southeast run. You got a Midwest run. You got a Northeast run. You guys could be going out to the West Coast. You guys are playing Michigan Metal Fest. You guys could be doing you know, a support run for some you know insanely big band where all of a sudden it's, all right, yeah, you get to go see Phil play, you know, six songs in front of, you know, 3,000, 4,000 people. And the best part about it is they're going to start out the show and everyone else has to follow them and try and follow exactly what the hell, what the hell they just did. Because be like, how the heck do we follow that up? Maybe you don't, but give it a shot. Why not? Hey, that's that's what we hope for. That's, that's the goal. goal. Yeah, that's the goal. Because, I mean, I've seen a couple tours like that where I remember it was last year's with that. It was the Motionless and White tour towards the end of the year with Knock Loose, After the Burial, and Alpha Wolf. And I was just like, all right, let's see how this tour is going to go. Here comes Alpha Wolf. It's like, how the fuck is anyone supposed to follow that up? After the Burial, I'm like, damn, they actually did. All right, now it's knocked loose. So this is just yeah. going to end up going absolutely bonkers, ape crazy. I'm like, I need to see something like, all right, we got filth going on. Then we got, you know, like Gideon going on. And then we got Lorna Shore headlining. Ooh, man. So that would be, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'd be that, insane. that would be, it would go from smashy, smashy fun, fun time in the pit to rootin' tootin' hitting in the pit to <laughs> just pig noises, squeals, carnage. That sounds like, honestly, you could, the Rootin smashy, Rootin smashy, rootin' tootin' pig noises tour. 
<laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh, that was good. You know, we're gonna cut that. I gotta cut that up. I gotta send that to Will Ramos and be like, "Look at this idea that we just came up with." <laughs> How would you not want to call a tour that, especially when you could do all the crazy, stupid ass fonts you wanted? I'm, as well as you know people are going to go crazy for that name it's going to be something that all of a sudden Loudwire and Karen are going to be like who the hell thought of the smashy smashy rootin tootin pig noises to to her and it's just three bands that are absolutely going to rip your face off and if you don't come out of the pit most likely bruised and sweating profusely something went terribly 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 wrong yeah <laughs> yeah you didn't have a good time <laughs> No, and then that, again, and oh my, and then, you know, could you imagine the shirts that would come off of that? Smashy, smashy, and then you get rootin' tootin' with the rope, and you get big, giant pink letters for pig squeal. And even at the end of it, you can put fun time to her. <laughs> yes. Oh, man. <laughs> Oh, now, if there's a tour and gets named that, I will be like, okay, that one I might actually want something for. If you guys just take Smashy, Smashy, Fun Time shirts, I just want a couple of shirts. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Oh, man, deal, deal. <laughs> oh, oh, man, we got to make it. So how about this? So, you know, yeah, I said, again, we I just made this crazy-ass prediction. But when it comes to, like, you know, the the support crews we're trying to get on, I don't want to know who you guys are looking at, but let me ask you this. What band would be, like, your dream band to go and support on a run? On a run? Whether it's, you know, just a couple of weeks, you know, countrywide long run, maybe international tour, doesn't matter. If you guys could pick any band to tour around with for like just like a month or so, what band would it be? And also, why? I always like to know the why. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna outreach far here, but uh, I do what you <laughs> Limp Biscuit. If I could spend a month on the road with Limp Biscuit, hmm, that'd be a dream come true. Still, that, that that's that huge inspiration for the music that I write and how I play guitar and everything. So that's why you know, fun band. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna say Amir. Not too far off from is uh, Amir, yeah. That, that, that would be another dream band for sure. For the same reason. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just I'm gonna be honest with you, thinking about both of those, I mean Limp Biscuit would be just absolutely insanely awesome seeing you go out there, you know, just absolutely going ape crazy, going heavy as all hell. And then just seeing Fred Durst come out there and whatever kind of look he has going on, whether he's the dad, whether he's the cowboy, yeah. whether at this point, you know, he's just been a space outfit. I don't know. But, <laughs> but Amir, like, I'm thinking about that one now. That one seems to be, in my mind at least, insanely plausible if Amir decides to go out on their own headlining run. Yeah, that would be incredible. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's put the vibes out there. Let's hope that this happens. <laughs> Dear Frankie. <laughs> Dearest Frankie, please go out on tour and be a headliner. You know people would show up. And please oh, yeah. bring filth because that just sounds like a good time. Yeah, it does. <laughs> please. Oh. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> You know, you got, we're just going to create a big, giant-ass vision board for both of you guys. There's going to be one side that just says Limp Biscuit and all the different pictures of Fred Durst. One that just says Amir and just has all these different pictures of you guys, like, pasted into Amir photos, just playing <laughs> alongside him and just absolutely ripping. It's like, well, what of these is bound to happen? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And if you guys don't make it, I may end up having to put something together, you know, okay, Adobe Illustrator, this, we're just going to make our own little board on here, you know, we'll put it out there on social media and maybe someone will pick it up. Maybe we'll get a, you know, maybe, maybe it'll get in the hands of Fred Durst. He'll be like, huh, that's funny. Let's do it. Oh, God. That would be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, that'd be, <laughs> words can't describe. I mean, I mean, maybe we got to just get, you know, a filth cover of break stuff. Would be dope. It'd be heavy. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I might want to do like. I mean, break stuff would be heavy, but I mean, Nookie would be pretty tight. I mean, yeah. <laughs> My generation. I mean, there's a lot. I mean, I can go on and on and on. And on. See what this is actually something I'm just thinking about now, just because it just. What if you guys did rolling? But then for the verses, you just change up the lyrics, just match whatever the hell you guys felt like. 
So they just kept the chorus the way, like the lyrics the way they are, and just built it around that. But whatever the lyrics are, it's you guys just completely transform into something of your own. And then it makes a lot more sense when it comes compared to, you know, maybe a little bit easier to integrate that into the whole entire filth sound. On top of that, then it can potentially come across as more aggressive and raw and just angry. And you never know, that might be something that just pops off out of nowhere. But of course, while you guys are doing it, someone somewhere has to be wearing a backwards red baseball cap or all you guys have to. (laughs) Got you. Already got you. That's it. (laughs) No, no, then the, but then the other question is, do you go full, like, 2000, 2001 wardrobe, or do you just stick with what you got going on now? Like, do you really just, like, lean fully into it and potentially get Ben Stiller for the music video? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That, that, yeah. Full tilt all the way. <laughs> Instead of, all right, partner, keep on rolling, baby. Just look at the keys, just like, fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> now I'm going to be on the lookout for that. If all of a sudden I see somewhere, like, in the next, like, six months or so, filth release cover of Rollin' by Limp Biscuit, I might just go running around the neighborhood just going, doing the Daniel Bryant yes chant because I know it's like, I know where the idea came from. Yes, yes. <laughs> and then I get in my car and blast it as I drive to wherever I'm going and as loud as possible so the entire city of Milwaukee has to hear it. Oh, please, yes. They all will have to hear it. <laughs> You know, at that point, why don't I just rent, like, a blimp with a bunch of speakers on it and just float it through downtown, just blasting the song? Honestly, that sounds like a great waste of, like, at least $50,000. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a waste, though? <laughs> well, well, I mean, well, I mean, the fines are going to be a waste when I have to pay the government some other, like, obscene fines for it. But, you know, the money to rent the blimp and actually, like, fly it and play the song consistently, I don't think that's a waste. It's going to be everything that gets added on after. It's going to be like, oh, I got to get rid of money for this and this and this and this. It's yeah. not that it was worth it to pay for it. Like, but I know this money is not, most money is going to probably just, you know, get lost in the shuffle for something. And I'm never going to see it again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hmm. But that could be one hell of a promotional idea. Even if it didn't go very well, at, you know, every publication is going to cover it. You know, every social media account's going to, you know, post about it. So. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that'd be, a, that'd be huge. <laughs> I know. I know what you guys are thinking it's just like you know what that'd be great, but but can you do it? Because then you know we don't have any of the financial burden of it, and then you get in trouble for it. Yeah, <laughs> oh, that'd be hot. <laughs> that honestly, that would be, but it would be a shit ton of fun. <laughs> oh yeah, it'd be talked about for a long time. Not only that, but then it would be, but then all of a sudden people would see like whatever music video you guys would make for that song. And then they potentially would see, you know, you guys just up and just taking Ben Stiller's car instead of being like, oh, let's be all sneaky about it. It's like he throws the keys, just like, okay, fuck this. And then you just take off with it. (laughs) Next thing you know, then you have for the end of the music video, you just come back. He's just like, what happened to my car? Be like, we were rolling. What do you expect? (laughs) (laughs) No. I'll say plus he's not plus he's not like it is like peak anymore so it would still absolutely fit it would still be hilarious and it wouldn't cost nearly as much as it used to be so win 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 a win yeah yeah (laughs) I I do have one question though if you guys make that happen okay in some capacity could I be in the music video just even if it's an as an extra or if you guys like just pretend like try and run me over with the car at some point Yeah, you could. <laughs> or or maybe I'm yelling at you guys from like a virtual blimp up on top, just like. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. We, we, all right. Now. All right. We got to start doing this, you know. OK, someone get a Kickstarter or a GoFundMe. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> um. Let's let's see what else can we do. Do we um just have like a just start having like a change collection thing, just a basket out there like the Salvation Army does in, in the in, for Christmas, but just have, <laughs> have on there filth limp biscuit rolling cover video. <laughs> oh my god, could you imagine putting that outside of shows? Oh my god. <laughs> 
Oh, it might it might gather enough uh, quick. <laughs> yeah, people probably willing to donate to that. Holy shit! Now think about this, especially for the run coming up. Throughout even all the runs in twenty twenty four. What if at the merch table you just had a tip jar and it literally just said "Fun Hour Rolling by Limp Biscuit Cover." <laughs> It probably wouldn't take long to, to, to get what we needed. <laughs> but then inside, like, inside, like, because, like, you put, like, the, you know, like, a, like that, like, pla plastic or, like, plexiglass, like, casing where people can drop the money in. But instead of him just drop the money in the bucket, make sure that it is a red New York Yankees baseball cap they drop that into so it falls in there. Could, could you, I mean, if I saw that, I probably would just easily take a look at whatever's in my wallet and be like... Well, I was going to spend this potentially on beer during the show, but um, yeah, this you is need a this better now. idea. <laughs> this, this, this seems like it's a lot more fun. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, shit. I, you know what? I got two more questions for you guys. And one, I always allude to at the beginning of every episode with every band just for the fun of it, but we've actually never gotten to it. But you know what? I'm having so much fun with this conversation. I got to ask you guys this. We're going to go random. Okay. Best Nick Cage movie and why? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh oh. Ghost, Ghost Rider. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know why. I just love it. <laughs> I, just, I just love it. I So there's two for me. One, because it is bad. And, and I love the original. The Wicker Man. <laughs> yes. It's just like he is so unhinged in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good one. Phallic symbol, phallic symbol. <laughs> and it's just like, I don't know if he's acting or if he's actually living this moment. He's like, <laughs> 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 but my absolute favorite is Color Out of Space. Ooh. Sci fi aliens. Yeah. yeah. Body snatcher touch. You know. Can't go wrong with it. Sam, I'm always torn between two. I'm always torn between, of course, the good old classic face off because he just wants to take his face off. Yeah. And, and it's like, even though it's like for the first part of the movie, you get Nick Cage's unhinged Nick Cage, and you get Nick Cage acting to try and be like a very conservative John Travolta, but also losing his mind at the same time. It works, but for me, I remember doing this during the pandemic. It was one of my most favorite moments of when everything was shut down. There was one night I sat at home. I started just, I was by myself. I think it was a couple of beers, maybe a part of bottle of tequila. I was just going to watch a movie and I put picked Willie's Wonderland. And yes. it's just Nick Cage <laughs> oh. kicking ass in a Chuck E. Cheese type thing where <laughs> all he does is scream. Yeah, <laughs> that movie was wow. I immediately after the movie, I can't remember if I called or I texted my brother, and I'm like, "Dude, you gotta watch this movie, and you gotta do it while drunk." He's like, "I'm not drinking right now." I'm like, "Well, then do it high. I don't give a shit. Just don't be in a sober state of mind when you watch this movie." That's the real Five Nights at Freddy's. That's the real. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't go with Five Nights at Freddy's. Literally, go with Willy's Wonderland because you get everything you want in Five Five Nights at Freddy's, but you get Nick Cage too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the important bit. It's all Nick Cage. That's what's important. All right, guys. I got <laughs> one more question for you before I wrap this up, and this is something I've been asking every single band and artist I've had in the podcast since September of 2023 because it allows not only us as listeners to get to know more about the great music that you guys love, but also gets us to know more great bands that absolutely deserve more recognition. So between the two of you, can you guys give me three bands that you absolutely love right now that you would love to see more people get into? Three bands. Hmm. Um, I mean, heavy hitter for sure. Rad dudes, bands crushing. Love them. Um, I'm still stuck on Malevolence. That band is incredible. Yeah, I love that band. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good band. Well, we'll see. There's a third. Uh, there's this really cool band. Um, they're called Filth. I think people need to check those guys out. <laughs> 
I don't know. I mean, I... what do you think? You like an up and coming band or just a band in general? I, I prefer an up and coming band, but if you've got a band in general that you absolutely love, it's like, man, they're underrated as hell. I wish they get more notice. I, I we can go for that as well. Just whatever you're feeling. There's a band called Nightmare, and they are sick. It's like genty. It's got like some black metal thrown in there. Heavy, stupid heavy. That's sick. So uh, yeah. It's like stupid heavy though. That sounds good. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Let's see. I'm. I'm gonna pick one more. Probably the homies and gut wrecked me. That band is. Yeah. Nasty. They're from the UK. No, are they from Germany? Germany. Yeah. They are nasty. Nasty. Man, you guys had to break the rules. First, you guys give your own band in there, and then you give me a fourth one in there. But you know what? That that might be rule number one of the podcast is there are no rules. So it makes sense. I mean, you know, shameless promotion. We got to do it. You got to do the shameless plug. You got to do whatever you can in order to get more people to know about you, get more people to listen to Southern Hostility when it comes out, get more people to see you on tour, and help get funding for the most epic deathcore rolling by Limp Bizkit cover of all time. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it has to be done. Well, guys, David, Dustin, I really appreciate you guys taking the time today for being on the podcast. It, I, You guys made me laugh hysterically throughout this one with these crazy ideas yeah, we had. So I'm absolutely floored by it. I'm going to end this podcast with three very specific things. So first things first, Southern Hostility, the brand new album from Filth comes out on April 5th. You do not want to miss out on this because it will make you want to have smashy, smashy fun time, not only in the pit, but in your house. You might try and run through a freaking wall after you hear this. So <laughs> what is what you're going to want to do? You're going to want to go pre-save it, pre-order it if it's before the 5th. If it's on the 5th or after, though, what you're going to want to do is go and stream it, listen to it, you know, buy the album. If there's any vinyl out there, go check that out, get it. But also follow along with the band because they're going to be online, you know, social media wise. Check them out on YouTube and get tours for their or get tickets for their upcoming tours. I almost flipped them around. That'd been weird. But get tickets for the up. Yep. (laughs) But get tickets for the upcoming tours. Best way to do it is go to the description of the podcast. They'll say find filth online. There'll be links and labels for everything down there. So you do not miss out on anything with this band. And of course, you get to go see filth live because you never know what might happen. On top mm-hmm. of that, you can help them fund the Deathcore Rolling by Limp Biscuit cover video. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> Absolutely. Now it's time for number two. So, gentlemen, whenever I've guessed on the podcast, I enjoy it on the podcast, which clearly this was one of those times. I tend to make a certain promise as a way to say, first off, thank you for being on the podcast. I appreciate you guys taking the time. And secondly, as a way for me to continue to support the band in the future. So, I never start these out by saying if. If implies this might not happen, but when implies it's going to happen. We just don't know the day or time yet. So when I get to see you perform live for the first time, I'm not going to go all Nick Cage and Willie's Wonderland and just scream and try and kick the level of and shit out of everybody. But I will go like Liam Neeson from Taken where I will look for you. I will pursue <laughs> yes. you. I will find you. And I'll come say hi and first round's on me. Please, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be great. Thank you. <laughs> I might have to get the leather jacket and the raspy voice, but you know what? It'll still be fine. <laughs> You got to do it. I will find you. I will find you. And first round's on me. <laughs> oh, man. Well, guys, I do want to thank you again once once again for coming to the podcast today. Number three is I will not end this by saying goodbye because, guys, this was fun as all hell. I definitely oh, want to yeah. have you guys back in the podcast again in the future. On top of that, I made you a promise. I do not like to make promises and not fulfill them. So, I will be seeing you live at some point. First round's on me. Love you back in the podcast again in the future. So, this is not goodbye, guys. David, Dustin, I'll see you later. Thank you, brother. Thank you, man. Ooh, well, folks, this is my interview with David and Dustin from the band Filth. And now it's time for Kevin's final thought. This was one of the more random, hysterical, funny episodes I think I've ever done in my entire life. Because when it comes to Filth, yeah, I knew about them. Yeah, I've listened to some of their music before. Yeah, I really liked what Southern Hostility had to offer. Yet, I did not know exactly where the episode was going to go. But what this show episode showed, if anything, for me with Filth was the fact that, one, when it comes to their music, they're incredibly proud of it with what they did in Southern Hostility, and they are opening up more than just being a heavy band. They're showing a little bit more of that hip-hop influence in there. They're showing a little bit more of the change they can go through, and it really does stand out, in my opinion, as you get through the whole entire album to really show what greatness this band potentially has in this whole entire heavier music genre. 
of deathcore. When we think about bands like Lorna Shore, when you think about bands that from the hardcore style like Knock Loose and Alpha Wolf really coming more to the forefront. Again, when bands start to experiment more with their sound and really flesh it out and really put more of themselves into it and have fun with it, this is what happens. On top of that, you can see where a lot of more of that fun comes in where the Limp Biscuit cover video idea. I mean, look at how much of a hysterical idea it was. It doesn't even matter if it's, you know, super high production. Or not. Just the idea that that might be a thing is even more incredible. That's really something I took from this episode was the fact that these guys are having so much damn fun with this that it's infectious and you're not going to want to miss out on it. So go script to the podcast where it says find filth online links and labels for everything from socials to where you can listen to all their music, where you can listen to all of Southern hostility, where you can find them playing live in your area and where you can just enjoy everything Phil passed off for down description below. Also be sure to subscribe to the corporate Crush podcast down here. If you're on YouTube, hit the like button. If over here on YouTube, if you like this episode to help push in the algorithm, also hit follow on spot fan podcast. If you are there and also like the episodes there to keep, you know, us pushing forward in the algorithm and keep new, all this great music growing. So I want to thank you guys for that as well. You can also follow the Corporate Crush Podcast on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, links below as well. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, David. Thank you, Dustin. Filth is fun as all hell. Smashy, smashy, fun time in the pit. Here we come. That's going to be your guys. Thank you for listening to the Corporate Progression Podcast. My name is Kevin, and you guys know how I end every single one. That's a big, healthy, and hearty. See y'all.